Hello everyone, you're Radar Contact and welcome to another VAS Aviation video. Welcome to Grid Navigation. Today we're going to see a problem, we're going to see an exercise about Grid Navigation, a very simple one. And for all those students that are going through their PPL or ATPL examinations, I really hope this will be helpful for you guys. Um, I'm also going to try to give you some advices and I'm going to explain the exercise doing it in two different ways. The first way is going to be the long version and is by doing it by trigonometry. And then the second one is by using a very simple formula that we have to know and that we have to learn and memorize in order to solve these problems and these exercises quicker. So that being said, um, grab your pen, take your notes and let's do it. Okay, so this is the question and the exercise that we're going to do today. A route is drawn from 75 degrees north, 60 degrees east, to 75 degrees north, 30 degrees west, on a polar stereographic chart with a grid aligned with the Greenwich Meridian. The grid track is 225 degrees grid, 255 degrees grid, 285 degrees grid or 315 degrees grid. You have the reference number for this question and for the different question banks. Um, I imagine down here or over here so you in case you're using one of the question banks you can uh, easily go to the question. You have the reference number somewhere over here. So this is the question we're going to today. As always with our polar stereographic exercises we start by drawing A circle. Um, at some point eventually as we gain experience we may ex skip drawing the entire circle and only draw the resulting triangle that we're about to find here but for now let's draw the entire whole circle and this circle right here represents the earth as seen from over and above one of the poles. Re uh, remember that the polar stereographic chart projection is a projection on top of one of the poles. So the first thing we have to know is which hemisphere we're in. And from the question we see that we are departing from 75 degrees north and we are going to 75 degrees north. So we conclude that we are in the northern hemisphere. So the center of that circle is the North Pole. The next thing is to see where the Greenwich Meridian is and on a northern hemisphere polar stereographic the northern uh, I'm sorry the Greenwich Meridian is right there and always pointing to the North Pole meridians are lines always pointing to the North Pole so that is the Greenwich Meridian which is the zero 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 degree meridian east or west that's the Greenwich Meridian and pointing to the North Pole. Next thing we have to know is which latitudes this polar stereographic chart represents because that's going to be very important for the resulting triangle later. And we're, we see that we are departing from 75 degrees north and we are going to 75 degrees north which is the same latitude so the entire circle here represents 75 degrees north latitude here, here, here and everywhere along the circle is 75 degrees north latitude so now let's find our departure and arrival points departure is 75 degrees north we already know that and 60 degrees east remember on polar stereographic charts and exercises east is on the right, west is on the left. So from the Greenwich Meridian, which is zero degrees, we go 60 degrees to the east. So this is zero degrees. This would be 90 degrees. So 60 would be approximately over there and pointing to the North Pole. This is 60, I'm sorry, 60 degrees east longitude and we're flying to 30 degrees west so this is west to the, to the left this is zero 
this would be 90, this would be 45, so approximately over there is 30 degrees west longitude. Now they say we are flying from 75 degrees north, 60 degrees east, so this is A, departure, to 30 degrees west, so this is B, arrival. We're flying this direction. And it's very important that you uh, draw something for you to know which direction you're flying. In my example, I like to just like draw a little aircraft right there, or maybe arrows, something that you know which direction you're flying because that is very important. In ATPL, for those starting for ATPL, there are many questions that look almost similar and actually at the very same numbers, but the direction of flying, the direction of, of flight is the opposite. Instead of going from A to B, is B to A. So the, the, the answer, the correct answer will be completely different. So um, keep in mind which direction you're flying and just draw, draw a diagram so you know. So as I said earlier, the long version of this question is going to be, I don't need this anymore. The long version of this question is by doing it and solving it via tri trigonometry. So as you can see, we already have a triangle here. We actually have two, but just skip the, the Greenwich Meridian. We have a triangle here. We have this triangle that we can very easily find the angles within that triangle. From the Greenwich Meridian to this meridian, to this local 30 degree meridian, is 30 degrees. Hopefully you can see that. From this meridian to this local meridian is 60 degrees. So we have 90 degrees here. And if you remember from earlier, when we said knowing the latitude is very important, this is why. Because 75 degrees latitude is here and is here, which means this distance to the North Pole is the very same as this distance to the North Pole. So we end up having an isosceles triangle. And from the triangle rules, on an isosceles triangle, the angle opposite to, an, to a side is the very same as the angle opposite to the other side being these two sides the same length. So the number on this angle and the number of this angle should be the same. And we have here that we have 90 degrees. This is 90 degrees, this great, this big angle right here. So from 90 to 180, we need 90 more degrees to reach 180 degrees and to be shared by this angle right here to this angle right here. So 90 divided by 2 is 45 and 45. Now the question asks for the grid track and the grid track is going to be the same at all infinite locations on the polar stereographic chart. And they say the grid track is aligned with the Greenwich Meridian. The Greenwich Meridian is here and pointing upwards, so the grid north will be everywhere on the chart and pointing in the same direction. So for the purpose of these exercises, I like to draw the grid north on the arrival point. So. This right there is going to be the grid north. Now we need to find the grid track. So to find the grid track by using trigonometry, we need to find the angle from the grid north to our route of flight, but not here because this direction is not the direction we're flying. So we need to go all the way back to our direction of flight. 
So we need to know the angle, this angle, right here. This would be the grid track angle. And if you use triangle rules, you can clearly see already that if this angle right here is 30, that means that this angle right here is 32. And if this angle is 45, the opposite side is also 45. And if this angle is 30, this angle is also 30. And this 180 degrees plus 30 is 210 degrees plus 45 is 255 degrees. So this entire red angle, the grid track, is 255 degrees grid. And everywhere we move and we transpose the grid north and we use our root of light is going to be 255 degrees grid. For the second version of the exercise, here's the formula that we have to learn. And it is in the northern hemisphere, a position west will have a convergency east, and the position east will have a convergency west. And this diagram right here is the explanation for this formula. But trust me, if you encounter these questions during your exam and you use this method, it shouldn't take longer than two, three minutes, maybe less, to solve the question. It will take longer because I want to explain everything to you. But trust me, it, it will be more, uh, it will be faster to do in your exam, and we want to save time during the exam. So. Um, as I said before, I didn't draw the entire circle this time, only the resulting triangle that we want, North Pole, Departure A, and Arrival B, just to explain what this formula is about. So, convergency is the difference between Great North and the local meridian. So, for example, at A, remember that Great North is the same everywhere along the chart. So, we have Great North here, pointing upwards at is the Greenwich Meridian. So, convergence is the difference between Grid North and the Local Meridian. The local Meridian is here. So, Grid North to the Local Meridian pointing to the North Pole, always pointing to the North Pole, remember, is 60 degrees. But, 60 degrees in a westerly direction. So, a position east will give a convergency west, 60 degrees west convergency. And at position B, position is west, and convergency is the distance, the difference between grid north and the local meridian pointing to the North Pole. So this angle right here is 30 degrees and going in an easterly direction. So, a position west will give convergency east. So, the convergency at B is 30 degrees east. Now, before we go to the mnemonic that will help us solve this question, we need to find the true track at either departure or arrival points. And the true track is the difference between true north and our route of flight at any point. So from 60, we know that the true north is pointing to the North Pole, so this is true north. But we are not flying this direction, we're flying 45 degrees to the left. So true north is 360 degrees minus 45, our true track at A would be 315 degrees true. This is 360 minus 45. This is 315 degrees true at position A. Same thing for B. If this is true north from the local meridian pointing to the North Pole, but we are not flying this direction, we are flying 45 degrees 
to the southwest. Let's say 30, 360 degrees plus 45 is 45 degrees, but we are not flying this direction. We are flying this direction right here, so the opposite to 45 degrees. 45 degrees plus 180 degrees is 2, 2, 5 degrees true at position B. At position A is 315 and at position B is 225. So now let's go with the mnemonic, the TCG mnemonic that I'm sure you know of to solve the question. And the mnemonic goes like this. True convergency and rate. We need to find well, I'm sorry, but the camera just stopped recording there. As I was saying, TCG, true, convergency, and great. Now that we know the true on either point on departure or arrival, we can fill in the blanks, and we want to know the great track. That is our question. So, for example, at point A, the true track of our flight was 315. And our convergency at A was 60 degrees west. Remember, this is a mnemonic, so you have to memorize. West is in a left direction. This means that this number right here is going to be greater than this number right here. By how much? By 60. So 315 minus 60 degrees to 5, 5 degrees, great. We already know the answer for the question, but as I said earlier, the grid track will be the same at every single infinite number of locations are, um, along our route of flight. But Let's try that out. At position B, our true track was 225, and our convergency was 30 degrees east. Well, remember, east is in the right direction, which means this number right here will be greater than this number right here. By how much? By 30. So 225 plus 30 degrees, 255 degrees, great. So we clearly conclude that the grid track and the answer for this question is 255 degrees, great. So that's it for today, I hope it was helpful. If you have any suggestions, questions, doubts, let me know in the comments and I will try to help you out. And as always, thanks for watching, Squawk VFR, Frequency Change Approved, and see you in the next one.